friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would try myself a different watering method. So there is not a single way you should water your plants. There are many, many different options. And if you've seen any of my plant tours videos, you'll have seen that I pretty much water in place. I have all of my plants in nursery pots and in cash pots. So they don't like just drip everywhere after I have watered them. But that isn't the only way to water. And I was speaking to Claire, AKA The Jungle Haven, um, one of my really good friends and another planty YouTuber that you should definitely check out if you haven't seen her already. She's amazing. And I was just realizing how different her watering method is to my own. And I was curious to give it a go for myself because I found it really interesting and I wanted to see if I liked her watering method or if I could incorporate maybe some of her like routine into my style and whether or not I would like it. If you are new here and you don't know me already, my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet so if you want to follow along with my houseplanty journey and maybe learn something along the way, stick around, watch some more of my videos and subscribe to my channel. If you're not new here, hi, thanks for coming back. Right, let's get into this. So I've asked Claire to send me a little video of her sort of watering process and I'm going to be following that today. So my watering routine might seem slightly tedious to some people because I bring pretty much all of my plants over to this table to water just because I like being able to kind of properly check them out as I water and get an idea of where they're at, what they're doing, if there's any pests or anything that I need to deal with. Obviously some of my big plants that are very difficult to move I don't do that for, but the majority I do. But I just spread my pot on that out and then I take a towel, an old towel, I've got lots of dog towels lying around so I usually just use one of those. And then I water into a washing up bowl and I've already filled my watering can. I've just got normal tap water and a bit of liquid gold leaf in there. For some of my more sensitive plants like calatheas and stuff like that, sometimes I'll just leave my water out to sit for like 24 hours so any chemicals or anything like that can evaporate. But the majority seem happy with this. So what I do, most of the plants in my collection are in pots just like this, which are just normal nursery pots that I've just decorated. So they've got really good drainage. So I will just literally hold them over the bowl, give them a really, really, really good soak through. Always make sure to target all areas of the soil because we don't like uneven watering. And then I wait for it to just pour out of the bottom of the pot. And while it's draining, I'll usually just give my plants a check over, make sure everything is fine and good. And then I will just pop it down onto the towel to drain for kind of five minutes or so until until my towel is full and I need to move more plants onto it. But obviously with all of my watering, it depends on the plant, what it likes, what it doesn't like, because some like their soil to completely dry out. Some like the top few inches of soil to dry out. And this one here, which is a blue star fern, which I actually got from Emma, but it's absolutely beautiful. And I haven't got around to revamping this one's pot. I've just got it in another pot. So this one, as I say, I know it likes its soil to be fairly moist. So I can see that there's a little bit, if I just stick my finger down in there, a little bit of moisture in the soil, but I think it could definitely do with a drink. So again, I'll just go ahead and water all areas of the soil. Check it's doing okay and then leave it to drain. So there were a few things that I found different to Claire's watering method than my own. And I think there's like four main ones. The first is that she tests her soil with her finger. The next she brings all her plants to a table to water them. So she takes them out of their situations. And then while they're draining out, she inspects them, which I think will be very useful for me. And then she lets them dry on a towel before putting them back. So I feel like her watering method is just a little bit more intimate with her plants than mine is. She's really getting up close with them and inspecting them with every watering, which I think I could definitely benefit from and it might allow me to better detect pests earlier. So let's, let's, let's give it a go. I have this morning already gone around my office and tested a bunch of plants with my finger. Um, I normally use a moisture meter because I like that I can get deeper into the soil with that than my finger, but your finger works just as well. You can do a whole lot with this little thing. And so I went around with my finger and I poked it in the soil and 
decided whether or not my plants needed water. I then took the plants that I thought did need water and I collected them and I have brought them all right there. And I'm going to be setting up my situation how she does. So let's, let's get into it. So first off, sorry if you can hear the wind outside. Although also there's a plane going by, but sorry if you can hear the wind going on outside. It's like very blustery today, but I have my table set up and I know my table is a whole lot smaller than Claire's. So I'm probably not gonna be able to fit as many plants on as she did, but I have my table. So let it set it up. So first up, she puts her potting mat out over the table and hers is a like more fabric-y potting mat so maybe it would stay a little bit better but I think once I've got plants on top of mine it should be fine and then she lays down a towel she says she uses a dog towel um, because she's got a dog I don't have a dog but I'm just gonna use like a basic terry cloth towel that we use for going to the gym not that exciting and then a washing up bowl, that's what, let me get that. Right, got the washing up bowl. And then she uses a watering can, which I have, ooh, I'm spilling. I have here, hers is a lot bigger than mine. I think hers is probably at least five liters. Mine is a little two liter boy. I suppose I could do this with a sprayer, but Nah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with the original Claire method. So she uses um, a watering can and I've got some liquid gold leaf here, which just, I'm gonna add. So I've actually spoken to Claire about this before, but we are both of the mindset that it is okay to continue fertilizing your plants throughout winter as long as like, if, as long as your plants are still growing, like obviously if your plants are going into dormancy, don't water them. But if you are still seeing new growth on your plants, it is perfectly okay to continue fertilizing them because they would still use the food that you're putting in their soil. And especially if you're growing plants indoors and you have either like a greenhouse cabinet or you've got grow lights set up, it isn't the same environment as the plants would be in outside. And you kind of, creating an artificial environment for them. And so it's, you don't have to, you don't have to have to um, like stop fertilizing if you don't want to, but only if your plants are like still growing. If they're not growing anymore, don't. So I guess I should just start then. Let's water, see how it goes see how I feel about this as a method. Evenly coating the soil, letting it drip. And then while it's dripping, I'm checking the plant. Um, I'm actually really excited about this one because it's finally got a new leaf. Um, so that is good because it lost a bunch of other ones uh, when I didn't get watered for a couple weeks. Um, it's okay, I was on holiday. Um, but yeah, that also be really healthy. like this whole like checking the leaves thing because I really do think that I would be more likely to find pests sooner if 
every time I watered, I was having a look at like all of the leaves of my plant. I mean, I don't know if she checks every single leaf every time or more just like has a once over and if anything looks a bit amiss, she'll do something about it. But I feel like it is probably really good practice to get into that. Just because it, it would like, it just forces you to take a look at your plants in a different way, which I think is probably really important and I probably should do more. <sighs> but it, it, it's just, it's one of those things that, yeah, I think, I think it would definitely benefit me if I did it more often. I think you'd also better see if your plants need a repot. So like this one here, because you can see the drainage holes. You can see that this one probably needs a repot. So maybe I'll repot this one later today. I don't think I've ever repotted this plant. It is like five years old at this point. Um, good job, me. Um, but it's definitely, it's definitely something that you just better get to see your plants like this. And I think a lot of plants would benefit from it. noticed this had I not done this video would I have freaking noticed or would I've just like gone on living my life with pests on my houseplants mm. okay so it's just one leaf but this plant has thrips oh, oh my god okay, let me see if I can take a video with my phone because it takes better videos up close. You see them? Oh, they're so gross. Freaking hate rips. To be honest, I'm just gonna remove this leaf because who needs it? I mean, this leaf definitely looks like there has been thrips on it, but I can't see any. So I might remove this leaf as well. The rest, seem to be looking okay. The plant definitely needs a dusting. But now that I know that it has pests on it, I can, I can treat it. Oh, that is really annoying. But it's fine, I guess. There's so many thrift larvae on here. And surprisingly, they're on the tops of the leaves instead of the bottom on this plant. Very odd. Okay. Chopped off with those two funky leaves. So I'm not gonna set this one near the other ones because I have just discovered pests on it. I will treat it after this. I'll just put it on this little thing to drain out and I'll treat it pretty much immediately after this video. That's probably why it wasn't doing well. <laughs> also, I'm pretty sure Claire normally takes what's in this bucket of water at the end once the, her watering can's like empty and pours it back into the watering can because like there's still nutrients within this water. I think, pretty sure, she wouldn't do this if she noticed pests on a plant because the pests could be in the soil and they could transfer when you're like doing that. For the most part, it should usually be fine, but since I have just found pests, I'm not going to do that with this water right now. I'm gonna dump this out, rinse it, and then continue. And then if I don't see any more pests on, like, like when I'm going through and watering the next ones, I can reuse that water because it's still got the really good liquid gold leaf fertilizer in it, the godsend. Not sponsored, we just really like them. Both of us are just like, fascinated by liquid gold leaf. So I'm gonna empty this bucket, rinse it, and then carry on.
my watering can. So maybe that was slightly useless. So I'm just gonna go refill this with water. And some more fertilizer. I'm gonna have to get a new bottle of this soon because I'm almost out. Oh, I should also note that I'm using like lukewarm water, which I'm pretty sure Claire does as well. We both agree that you shouldn't water your plants with cold water or too hot of water. A good lukewarm or room temperature water is good. You can also leave your water out, like Claire said, and that will pretty much automatically make your water room temperature because it's just sitting out in the room. So yeah, you have you have options, but room temperature is the best. <laughs> This is actually a plant I got from Claire. This is the Aguilinema Silver Queen, I think. And it's growing really well. I feel like doing this as well, because you're checking leaves, you can always remove any that are a bit funky, like whether they got pests or not, and like check and remove any sort of like yellower ones. just will knock this plant over um, as per usual that's the one risk of moving your plants is that when you move them around slightly you have a higher risk of knocking them or dropping them or dropping other plants around them um, and knowing me and my clumsiness um, <laughs> it happens all the time when I'm moving plants around so I'll have to put some more soil in this one in a minute. I did just repot it um, actually earlier today because it needed it. So anyways, it needs more water and we'll need more soil in a minute. <laughs> There's lots of soil on the back of the leaves now, which sometimes can look like spider mites. I mean, there's not spider mites on this plant, but the soil makes it look like there are. I should probably give it a shower after this. Just pour it all over itself. from Claire that we got in our swap. It is the Thomatophyllum bifinatifidum. As you can tell, I have learned to pronounce it, which is great. This one definitely needs a bit more soil as well. So I'll pop some more in when I do the Hoya. very small table <laughs> but I think I'm just gonna let these sit for like five or ten minutes to dry out um, and during that time I'll give you my thoughts on this so overall um, having done this with like a very 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 small portion of my plants I feel like I understand why it takes so long for Claire to water because in the time I spent watering all of those I probably could have watered like maybe an entire room of my collection. It'd probably be different if I had a bigger table that I could put more plants on or like I suppose I could put them in the bath or something so maybe I could sort of do this in the bathroom 
and like put a towel down in the bath for them to drain there. There's definitely options. I think I'm gonna think about it more about how I could make something like this work for me. I don't think I'll water it like this every single time because it is so time consuming, but I do definitely see the benefits in it. Like I genuinely probably wouldn't have noticed the thrips on my Monstera Peru soon <laughs> if I hadn't watered it this way, if I hadn't pulled out to water it like this. Which makes me need to reevaluate my <laughs> pest checking skills. So I definitely do see the benefit of watering your plants like this for that kind of thing and checking and then you can like prune your plants as, as you're here doing this stuff. And you just really get to see them and like pay a bit more attention to them, which I think is really, really good and definitely important to do every once in a while. I think a lot of other plant people water like this as well, at least plant YouTubers water similarly, like whether it's over the sink or something like that, but they bring their plants to the water rather than bringing the water to the plants, which is how I normally do it. I think also this is a really good way to make sure your plants are getting enough water and that the soil is thoroughly soaked. Like as you can see, the water was like fully dripping out of the bottom of the pot and really getting in there really deeply, watering them deeply, which is really important to keep your plants happy and make sure you're not watering unevenly. When I water like just in situ, which is what I, I guess I'm gonna call it, um, because they're in cash pots, they don't have like drainage fully, they can drain out and I could go around half an hour after I water and like empty out all the cash pots. But let's be honest, I'm far too lazy to do that. And so like, it is probably a good thing that I'm, I've watered plants like this because then water definitely isn't sitting at the bottom of the pots and you're a lot less likely to overwater by leaving that layer of water at the bottom. I highly recommend if you do water in situ to go around half an hour after you water and make sure that nothing's sitting in water. I know that is a pain and I definitely don't do it all the time. I should, but I don't, but I recommend it. Um, so yeah, I think this is a really good way to better make sure you're not overwatering. But at the same time, I feel like I'd be a lot more tempted to underwater my plants if I had to water like this every single time. Not that anyone has to, and I definitely don't have to. I could sort of do a mix, sometimes water like this and like more thoroughly check things and sometimes water in situation. But I think I would definitely desire to do my watering less and I think it would feel a lot more like a chore if I did water purely this way. Like, so there's just there's just pros and cons. Like, it's, it's not going to be for everyone, but I think it's actually really good that I've tried it because I have seen a different side to watering and I've literally never watered like this. I have always from the start for the past, I suppose nearly five years now, always watered in situ rather than bringing them someplace to water unless I'm showering them off. So it's, it's really good to see that there's different ways of doing things and it's okay that there's different ways of doing things and you can do what you need to do to make your plants happy and make yourself happy. And if you have a bit more time and energy, this sort of watering system, I think, would be really beneficial to do on a regular basis. I wanna say I will continue watering like this. I want to say that. But I don't think that I will regularly have the time and energy to do it. If I were to continue watering like this, I think I'd have to massively change how I water and further go into trying to water like room by room or like section by section on different days because then I think it could be possible and feasible for me because I would just spend a few hours every day doing different rooms. But if I had to go and do my entire collection like this in a day, that would not work. Overall, I think this is a pretty good thing to have done. I think in general, I would like to work towards more of this style of watering because I do see the sort of benefits from it. 
but I think it will take a while to get to a point where that is possible. Also, sorry if the angle changed a little bit. I just had this thought while I was like, not tidying up after the video, but I sat down for a second because I'm still letting these dry off. But the one thing that Claire doesn't do that I do is she doesn't use Pond very much or Semi Hydro and I have a lot of plants in Semi Hydro and watering those is a lot easier in situ. That being said, when I am fertilizing those, I do it with a different dilution. I do it with the Semi Hydro dilution recommended by Liquid Gold Leaf because there's different dilutions. I think it's like half as much or something like that. So it is, it, it, it would be a different sort of water that I'd be watering them with, but it is something to note that if you are watering with pond or semi-hydro that this method wouldn't work in the same way because you need a, you don't need a water reservoir, but the way I do it, I have water reservoirs for all of my semi-hydro plants. So those will pretty much always get watered in situ because it just makes a lot more sense to do it that way. So I just thought that was interesting and obviously how you water depends on your collection and it just so happens that my collection is probably like a third semi-hydro. So a third of my plants I'm pretty much always gonna water in situ. So just, just a quick thought before we end the video. <laughs> so yeah, that is it. That is trying the Jungle Haven's watering style. Thank you, Claire, for sharing your watering method with all of us. Um, and thank you to all of you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. But I'm curious, do you water more like this, like bringing your plants to the water, or do you water more like I normally do in situ, bringing the water to the plants? Let me know down below in the comments because I'd be interested to see sort of where the lines are. So, or if you water completely differently, let me know and maybe I can try your watering style because why not? <laughs> but yeah, thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplanty things you'd like me to talk about and watering stuff and subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.